TCI is brought to you by Forestry, sire of 42 stakes winners, including 2011 Preakness winner Shackelford. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Triple Crown. I'm John Siegel alongside Joel Cunningham. So Joel, we're at the end of February. We have four races with graded earnings up for grabs. Surely we're going to see an end to all the maiden madness, right? Yeah, the theme of new talent is over, John. Creative Cause is going to stamp himself as a top contender. They're, we're at the end of February. There's not going to be any new horses now. Nope, didn't happen. Nope. We see it again at Santa Anita. We see another maiden winner steal the show. His name's Painter. He's with the Bob Baffert Zayat Connections. Joel, this horse has the talent and the pedigree to boot. Another new shooter, John, and you're absolutely right. This horse, in my opinion, stole the show this weekend, and he really captured your imagination for what he could be. Now, his maiden win, he was a little green, didn't break so well, but the way he looped the field and his beautiful of a colt he is with the hype he has with his pedigree to go five and a half furlongs and show the strides he did right. inside the 16th pole to win very easily. I was very impressed with what kind of colt he can be. Question will be, can he be it by May 5th? Well, Joel, let me tell you, Zayat is on fire right now. They have horses all across the country. And right now, we have Justin Zayat. He is the racing manager for Zayat Stables. Justin, thank you so much for coming on the show. Man, you guys are on fire. Thank you very much for having me. appreciate it. Hey, Justin, Joel Cunningham here. I got to ask you, man, no other owner on the trail right now has as many horses as you do. You've got four. And your most recent winner, Painter, could be as exciting as any of them now. If you're going to keep him on the trail, you'd be bucking history a little bit. Obviously, Apollo, right. over 100 years ago now, was the last horse without any two-year-old form to win the Derby. What gives Painter, what gives you confidence in Painter that he could be that type of horse to change that trend? In this race, you didn't really show like we got to any bottom of him. So that really, that's a really big confidence booster for me. And in the past couple of years, as we all know, there really hasn't been any any way to get to the Derby. I mean, last. Last year, you, uh, Animal Kingdom won off a six-week layoff. It was unheard of. Uh, the other year, we had Mind That Bird come from New Mexico and 50-1 to one upset. The year before that, we had Big Brown from the 20s. So I think right now anything can happen going into the Derby. Well, Justin, it sounds like you guys always had Derby aspirations for this cult. So I guess the obvious question would be, why the late start? The horse got hurt. In August, he got a little ankle chip, so we felt it was good to give him the time to come back, and we did right by him, and patience prevails. Well, Justin, i got to ask you, a week ago, Bodie Meister really breaks through with a big-time performance. I mean, here's a horse that bred to go long, but unlike Painter, first time out, he didn't run as well. It took him second time out stretching out for him just to blow the doors off of Maidenfield and also jump onto the Derby Trail. Talk about Bodie Meister a little bit and where you think he'll surface next. We expect him to run really well. I can't tell you I expect him to win by 10, but that was, that was really super. And for ne what's next for Bodie Meister, I'd probably say we're going to look at the Sunman Derby or the Rebel as well. So either, either or, we'll work him back and we'll talk with Bob and see how he's doing and then we'll make a decision. All right, Justin, you guys just keep rolling. Let's talk about Z Dagger, a horse that runs this weekend in the Risen Star. We last saw him in the LeCompte where he had a little bit of trouble. What do you think of his chances this weekend? I love our post. Uh, the, field, the field is tough, though. I mean, you have Mr. Bowling you have to respect. You have shared property. So the top three finishers in the LeCompte, in the LeCompte are all back. And El Padrino now shipping in for Todd. He's also a hell of a horse, but I like our home field advantage over him. Well, Justin, you mentioned LeCompte. Another horse coming out of LeCompte for you is Dan and Sheila. Now, he's going to run two weeks from now in the Gotham Stakes where he'll face champion Hanson. Tell me how Dan and Sheila's doing, and give me your impressions of how he ran in the LeCompte because, to me, he could have been the best horse that day. He got in a lot of trouble and ran a sneaky good race, uh, obviously finishing behind Z Dagger. I was very excited about that race, and going into the Gotham, He's been training really well. I mean, he put in a good work yesterday, a very good work, and he's ready. Uh, facing hands, and it'll be very interesting to see. So, Justin, you guys got four horses on the Derby Trail. Tell me, how do you plan to keep these horses separated? I mean, I, I guess it's always a good question to be asked where you're going to be separating your horses on the Derby Trail. Uh, we're going to probably try to keep them separated. It may be hard enough points, but we try to keep our horses separated and run each one in a different prep. I mean, we're going to have Dan and Sheila right now in New York. We'll have Z Dagger 
in the fairground circuit. We'll have William Meister out in California, and hopefully we'll be shipping Painter to Oakland for the Rebel. Well, Justin, one thing's for sure, man. you got a busy couple months ahead of you. Thank you for coming on TCI, and good luck on your way to the Kentucky Derby. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Well, Joel, Zayat's loaded, but Baffert right now is out of his mind. He's winning everything. He won three of the four races with graded earnings up for grabs. Probably would have won the fourth, except he didn't have a horse in there. He probably would have won the El Camino Real. He just needed a torpedo horse, John. He is rolling right now. And you know what? Painter might have as much classic potential as any of them. The question for him is, did he come along too late? Right. But when you talk about Baffert and Pletcher, you know, we've said it many times on this show, they're both loaded. And what's interesting is if you polled them right now and, and asked who their best horses are, I bet you they honestly couldn't tell you. I mean, I think there's a lot of talent in both barns, a lot of classic potential that's developing right now. So very interesting to see how they sort out. But both of those barns are loaded and Baffert is rolling. Well, Baffert ships ho two horses to the southwest. He keeps Drill home. He wins the San Vicente with it over Creative Cause. The connections of Creative Cause says they didn't have to win the race, but you would have thought they had hoped for a lot more than that. Well, Drill's been so disappointing. I mean, obviously he loves seven furlong John and he showed up and he won this race, but I wasn't real impressed with the race overall. So for Creative Cause to run as flat as he did in the stretch, and to goof around, I mean, here's a horse that swapped leads, swapped onto his left lead twice in the stretch. You know, he galloped out okay, John, but for me, it wasn't that good of a race. I thought American Act finished as well as any, the way he fought back. Right. He looks like a colt that's interesting as he gets around two turns. But for creative cause, I expected him to show more class. And I know the Santa Anita track has been playing towards speed, and he came from off of it, but I just wanted to see a little more punch in the stretch from creative cause. Well, we definitely won't throw him out, but let's yeah. talk about some horses up in the El Camino Real Derby. Joel, do you think either one of those horses did enough to stay on the Derby Trail? Maybe the UAE Derby Trail, and that's probably where they're going to go with Lucky Chappie, who was really unlucky, I thought, uh, not to win that race. But we've talked about this, John. Both of those horses have turf poly track profiles. Now, I guess you can never count out right. Team Valor right. when it comes with a poly track or turf horse. They obviously won the Derby with Animal Kingdom, but he was a different kind of colt, big, strong colt. So I would say this will not have an effect on the Derby Trail. Maybe an effect on the Bluegrass Stakes or the UAE Derby, somewhere on synthetic, but that's about it. All right, we mentioned Baffert shipped two horses into the Southwest. They split it into two divisions. Baffert wins both of them, one with a favorite, one with a long shot. I like the long shot better. Yeah, what a home run. Bob sends two horses for $250,000. The race gets split. He wins them both and gets $500,000, gets 60% of $500,000. Right. Two horses with immense graded earnings. Secret Circle was supposed to win, John. Now, Bob Baffert's already said he thinks this Colt's probably a sprinter. Might be even, even his last start around two turns. They might back him up from going forward, make him a sprinter, but cast away. You know, I'll tell you one thing. He was impressive, John, to break from as far uh, wide as he did and to show that type of finish. You know, they said this Colt exiting the paddock actually laid down before he went onto right. the track. Just incredible the way Bob's horses are firing right now. <laughs> Castaway's a horse that took forever to break his maiden, but impressive performance. Let me make this one fact about Street Sense. Here's a, a lot of his horses, his first crop of two-year-olds, were a little late to come around. But boy, they're rolling now, John. Castaways won. You talked about street life last week. And then I want to mention another horse, Sir Bond in Louisiana. That's really put it together. Flashy maiden win. Could be a contender now for the Louisiana Derby. All three by street sense. All got better at three and with distance. Watch out. There you go. Maiden madness right there. Thank you, Joel. And thank you guys for watching. Make sure you come back on Thursday. We're going to preview the Risen Star and the Fountain of Youth.